going to be on footings and formwork. What it is is basically footings and formwork are the, the basic structure for any building or house or anything you want to build, right? And the first thing you start with is going to be batter boards, right? Do we know what batter boards are? Uh, no. Okay, so what a batter board is, it's going to be where you post up a line, right? You're going to post up a line from here to here. From this 2x4 to this 2x4, and these are our stakes, right? So like, like nails, nail stakes? These are stakes. These will be pounded into the dirt with uh, a sludge hammer. Okay. And so you will post up oh. a line to basically give you a straight run okay. because you're on dirt. I can't mark it like I can the uh, the ground. Yes, sir. So I like the like the big old poles with the holes in it, like that. Um, it's not a pole. It's okay. it's pretty much just a metal stake. All right, and it does have holes where you can nail in your two by four. Uh, would the stakes not be on the other side of the boards? Yes, they would. Okay, but um. So they would be on this side, really. And the reason for that... Make it even? No. Because once you put the line on, and you pull that line straight, or as tight as you can, your nail that you have in the stake, if it was on this side, you'd pull that nail right off of that 2 by, off of that two by 4 right off of that stake. All right? Yes, so this line, string line, is basically going to give you a straight line to start creating your formwork. All right? And then say we were going the other way as well, there would be, you would set up batter boards going the other way, right? and you would nail it, nail it, and then you would set your batter boards, and this will be your cross point. So basically, this is this would be the corner of your building here. And then from there, you will go three, four, and that should be five. So you would double check to see if you were square, right? And then, and then you would do it again. And then you would three, four, and from here to here would be five. So that would make your building square, right? And then you would know that you could pull off of this side, this way, when you set your other batter board, right? You would know it was square and drop that line. So you would do another batter board and drop that line. And you would be square. So this is how you would get your building square. And then, let me erase this. And then you would go start putting up your uh, footwork. Your, your forms, right? You would have to Put up your forms. All right. And then when you put up your forms, On your corners, your first stake 
would be how far from the edge? Does anybody know? Do you remember? How far? I think like uh, inch and a half. <laughs> do you remember, no, Sir Ivan? I do not. Okay, well, this is where you need to pay attention. It's three inches from the edge, right? Mm -hmm. So your first stake from both ends should be roughly three inches, right? And the reason for it is because that's where most of your pressure is going to be. When you're building and they pour in that concrete, that concrete's heavy, and it's going to want to push that open, right? So you want it as close to the edge as possible. And then from there, what is every other stake at? Do you remember, Sir Ivan? Huh? I took a while, I guess, three inches. Oh, my God. Close! Six. Six. Six what? Inches. No. no. Six it's feet. not in inches. So from stake to stake, right? Do you remember, Sir Austin? I do not. You do not? All right. It is going to be three foot. Three. three foot. That is the minimum. That goes every job site across the United States. You want to make sure your form work is three foot, right? Every stake will be three foot. And if you have two foot, six inches from this stake to this stake, you're under three foot. So you're good, right? And then after, after you do, it has your upright stake, right? What other? What else do you need? Does anybody know? Do you remember? What does it need, Austin? Uh, don't forget what exactly it's called, but the, uh, the sort your of kicker angle, stick. It's a 45, right? You need your kick. So you need a stake. And you would nail it here. And remember, you're always going to have duplex nails. Do, do any of you guys know why we use duplex nails? Take them off. Huh? Take them off. Correct. That is exactly correct. House builders, they do not use duplex. What do they use? Uh, sinkers. Uh, sinkers. sinkers. They use sinkers, right? And the reason why is because when you're building a house, putting on a roof, are you coming back to strip that roof? No, no you aren't. It's there for good. So when you're building to strip, which is concrete formwork, you're building to take off. So that's why you always have these duplex nails. That doesn't mean to sink them into the wood, right? They're, it's there for a purpose. Remember, everything's there for a purpose. The, does anybody know what this stake right here has to be at? Huh? 45 degrees. 45 de degrees. Do you understand why? Uh, to keep it upright. Okay, so when you have this one at 45 degrees, right here, when uh, when the concrete is poured, right? When the concrete is poured, it's going to want to push this that way. And if we do not have this 45 on there with that duplex nail holding this top, it's going to push it out. So no matter how square you had it before, it does not matter. It's going to push it out. And then all your work is no good. Your boss is going to be mad at you. It's going to be like, I just wasted a bunch of money. So this is why we do the kickers, right? Okay. I'm making these squares because on the plans, that's how it's going to show you, right? That's how it shows you that that's concrete. 
better have a bunch of dots and then little triangles in it. And that's how you show concrete. And then the finishers. See like when these guys that that, that are over here are, are masons and, and are and our concrete form form guys. They're not even formed. We're the form guys. Out on the job site, they would not touch your form. Here at the center, yes, they do. They build their form sometimes. But out on the job site, they do not touch nothing. You guys as carpenters will do everything. You guys build it. You guys strip it. You guys will sit there and wait for them to pour the concrete. You guys will sit there with your bags on, which is pretty much the most boringest day you will ever ever have. Do you remember sitting? Yeah. Watching? Do you remember sitting there watching? Do you remember sitting there watching? Yeah. How was it? Oh, it was fun when when they started blowing our 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 form work. <laughs> and that's that's what they do, right? They don't take mm -hmm. into consideration that it's a hundred and some degrees out there and if I blow the form, Xavier has to go running. Ruthie has to go running. Ivan has to go running. Faith has to go running. Joel, you're going to be going running, right? And that's when our job gets really fast, right? You can't be the... Huh. I'm going to go get that 2 by 4 for you. Because concrete isn't going to wait for you. Concrete is going to push that over, break your 2 by 4s your plywood, everything. Concrete is heavy, all right? So what we want to do is we want to run. This is where we, when we're doing that Carpenter Olympics, this is why we do it, right? We send you guys out there to do stuff that we're going to do. So when we go pour some stuff and something happens, it's like, oh, I'm going to grab that two by four. I'm going to grab that plywood and I'm not, I know I can carry it and move at a good pace, right? I know I could get this plywood over there and not worry about it. Right? I got to save my concrete. I don't want to wait till it's too late and then my form's trash. So you need these on every one, right? You're going to need your 45 on every one. Every one all the way around your form is going to need your 45. Right here, you would have nails holding your form going the other way. Sorry, my drawing's a little trash. It's okay. But you guys get the picture, right? Yes, sir. And ultimately, this is how you would build a concrete form, and it just goes over and over again. Like, even when, when you're doing sidewalks, right? Sidewalks have to have a kicker. Um, you always got to make sure you three, four, five, everything, because we went out and checked some of their form work and, and their stuff around here on the center, and it's not square. Our stuff, as carpenters, we got to make sure we leave square because you know what they're going to say, right? That was the carpenters. That was the carpenters that did. All the time. That's what they do. They blame us. They don't care. They're going to blame us. And you know who loses their job? You do. Carpenters lose their job. So this is where our concrete form work is. And then, for example, there's another way you can do it, right? We have we did it out here on the on the showroom floor. Like on our columns, right? You run your two by fours on your corners. You can run two by fours past. Let's say you got three and a half, right? And three and a half. What is that? Three and a half and three and a half. Seven. Seven. So from here to here, you need seven inches, right? I usually go 10. 
and give I give myself 10 inches either way because now I got to put a two by four here a two by four here on your corners two by four here and we even do this on big footings right and the reason for is because it holds your concrete from pushing just like we did on, all, on, on this formwork here that's why I left that formwork up I left that formwork up so you know when when people come in and I'm doing these drawings right I'm not a Picasso <laughs> I'm not a Picasso, but with this right here, me showing you, right, and then I can take you out there and it make and make it make sense, and make it make sense. That's what I want to do for you guys. Do you understand what we're doing now when we go out there and we do some footwork and I tell you to lace the corner? All right. This is called lacing my corner. This is lacing my corner, right? You run them, you need seven inches, but if you go 10 and you have two inches of play, three inches of play, ain't nobody gonna tell you nothing. They're gonna be like, good job, good job. You don't have to fight with it, right? And you lace up that corner do you know how many nails go in into each two by four? Like say this was from here to here, let's say it was four feet. It was a four foot form. So you have a two by four here, you have a two by four here, and you have a two by four at the bottom. You know how many nails go into each each lacing? Two. Two, correct. Two. So in every two by four on your corner, right? This will go past. This one will go past. And this one will go past. Right? And the reason why you put it at the bottom, you want a two by four at the bottom because you're gonna put two nails. Two nails, right? Two nails. There's that one. There's that one. You're gonna put two nails for the fact that when when you put that lacing, two nails holds a lot better than one. And then right here on the bottom of the form is where you have the most pressure. On the bottom is where the concrete weighs the most. So like, let me give you an example. When I was in San Diego and we were doing beam sides and I was, I mean the beam sides were 20 feet in the air. My form was four foot, four and a half inches. four foot, four and a half inches, right? So obviously you could put one whole sheet, that would be four foot, right? A guy put the four and a half inches on the bottom. And what this does is where the most pressure is, that form went like this, boom it started raining concrete. I mean, literally raining concrete. When you're on these high rises and a bunch of these commercial buildings, the concrete is very thin. So this is where the most pressure is on the bottom. So on that bottom of that beam site, 
It just boom, and it just literally looks like it's raining, 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 raining. And I yelled up, hey, hey, stop the concrete, stop the concrete. My superintendent runs down and he's like, he's like, Mike, Mike, what happened, what happened? And I go, the form blew. And he looks up and he's like, God damn, who put that on the bottom? I can't tell you. Even if I did know, I probably wouldn't tell on him. That's not the way I get down. But he goes, what are we going to do? What do you do? I just put my head down and I started walking through the concrete. Start walking through the concrete and start climbing the shoring. I got to climb up 20 feet. Climb up 20 feet and I start ordering, you go grab me two by fours. Joel, go cut me some wedges. You go grab me four by fours. Ruthie, go get me some tie wire. I don't have time to wait. Joel takes off running. Ivan takes off running. Ruthie takes off running. And I'm climbing while I'm climbing. Mind you, my boots are muddy. And my, and my superintendent's looking at me like, what the heck is going on? Why are you walking through that mud? Well, I gotta fix it. I climbed up to the top, chained myself off. If any of you guys see my bags, you see the way they are. I chained myself off and I'm hanging. And I, and he brings a four by. I bring it up, Ruthie's come back, comes back with the tie wire. I, she throws me up the tie wire, throws me up the two by four, uh, four by, and I tie it off to the shorn. It's basically scaffold, right? I'm, for you guys that don't know what shoring is, it's basically scaffold. I tie it off, boom, tie it off, boom. So my shoring is going up here and I tie a four by right here with tie wire. I have it tied around. And I tie it, I tie it to there. And with this four by, I have Ivan cut me a two by, a little short, right? Cut it a little short. I have Joel start cutting me wedges. Joel cuts me wedges and I start hammering these wedges. What a wedge is, is basically a triangle of a wood, right? So I start hammering wedges in, pushing this form back in to hold the concrete. I get it close. I don't get it all the way in, but I get it close enough to where the superintendent says, that's good, Mike. Leave it right there. That's good. We can finish pouring. And then he calls back up top and he's like, hey, bro, pour slow. Pour some more concrete in there. I want to see what happens. And they pour some more concrete. It stood. So he said, give it a foot lift. Go pour something else come back. What does it do when you give it a foot lift, go pour something else and come back? Time to set it. it gives it time to set. It gives your concrete time to get hard. And once that concrete gets hard, it's not going to push no more. And then he can finish pouring. So he gave it a foot lift and that's usually That's usually what they want to pour. They want to pour it a foot at a time. Sometimes they'll go 18 inches, which is one foot six, right? And then they'll let it set a little bit and then they'll pour again and pour again, pour again, pour again, till they get to four feet. Because if you pour all that concrete in there, what happened that four foot? So much pressure. Huh? So much pressure. Do you remember what happened at four foot? That sounds like you were listening to uh, a, a bowl of Rice Krispies. Snack, crackle, pop, right? It was... It starts popping. And you'll hear it right away. When you start hearing it, it's a very significant sound. You ain't gonna, you ain't gonna be able to say, oh, I don't hear that. You're gonna hear that thing. Because wood starts popping. It starts... The same shit, like a tree coming down in the woods, right? So... You do a foot lift, some people will do 80, 18 inches, which is one foot six, right? 
and, and then they'll just go a foot, a foot, a foot, till they get to the top. And then they're done. And that's pretty much how you pour a concrete foot. You want to make sure you have your, your uh, kickers, your uprights, lace your corners, and make sure you do a 45 on every corner. Anybody else got any questions? No? Do you, do you think you can do it? Yeah? We did. We did it last week. You did what last week? We set up a frame right there. Oh, and, yeah. and, concrete, and yeah. concrete? Yeah. We can do the 45 and all that, but... No, you just did yeah. stakes down, right? Yeah. See, they didn't do a lot of... Yeah. I explained it in more detail, right? Yeah. So now, does it make sense? Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. that's carpentry, what yeah. they're doing. Yeah. They don't do that on the fields. Yeah. We do that. Yeah. My guys will do that. He can tell you all he wants. Oh, yeah, we do this. We do that. Yeah, oh. on residential, non-union. Oh. But when you're union, no, no, nobody. <laughs> That's my work. Yeah. You go over there and sit with your trials until I'm done. <laughs> All right, go ahead and stop.